Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. One last one here for this go around. Thank you so much again for your suggestions. If you didn't hear any of yours this go around, no problem. We'll have, there should be another one probably in a couple of weeks or so and it'll be another good chance to take a look then. This last one though I just wanted to pick out of the blue. It's not something that someone suggested. Instead I saw it on the UFO casebook.com website and looking at it it's so fascinating on so many levels uh, definitely interested me and I wanted to share this particular case here so many unique distinctions associated with it too that you're going to find fascinating and it has to do with an incident that occurred way back when January 1878 Eight. And the reason, one of the reasons why I picked it was because it happened to take place in Denison, Texas, which is a place that I have visited several times for the past few years. Denison, Texas is a place a little bit further up north, Texas. So whatever occurred there in January 1878... It's called the eight, not January 1878, Denison, Texas, Daylight UFO. And I, I love reading about this because next time I go to Denison, Texas, then I'll know that I was basically stepping, when I go into the city, stepping into this history here. So what occurred? So back then, again, 1878 in January, there was a unique incident that occurred in several ways. Number one, this was apparently the very first time that the word saucer was used, or one of the earliest, if not the earliest, that the, that the word saucer was used to describe a flying object. A neat little bit of trivia. The word flying saucer actually came about apparently as a misquote back in 1947 it was done by a guy a journalist named Kenneth Arnold he had described it not necessarily as the shape but the way that something moved because the way someone was telling him that he saw this flying object move in the sky it's as if somebody threw it like a saucer would be skipping across water so that's where you get the term flying saucer now in this case the word saucer actually appeared 69 years ahead of that 1947 report. So the 1947 report is considered one of the first circumstances of that word being used, but in fact, this is proof that we have that word used even earlier. So here's what occurred. Uh, there was a Texan farmer by the name of John Martin. And by the way, all of this was placed within the Denison Daily Newspaper, the one that they had there in 1878. And I found it. I found the actual printing of it. You're looking at the page of it here. I love history like this. I love being able to go and see something back in time uh, today, especially through the use of something like this. It reminded me when I was back in college and university, sometimes when I wanted to kill time, in between classes I would go visit the library and take out the microfiche and there I would look up some really old newspapers because that is so fascinating to me so it was great to do that again here in any case this is the actual listing showcasing it the newspaper whoever was the reporter there at the time back in 1878 heard about what happened to John Martin and definitely wanted to place it now I'm gonna zoom in and you'll see an even closer picture just proof again that this was in there and it's going to be straight from him so let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read it basically straight from the newspaper itself quite fascinating again because I'm reading history that was so long ago so it says from Mr. John Martin a farmer who lives some six miles north of this city we learned the following strange story Tuesday morning, while out hunting, his attention was directed to a dark object high up in the northern sky, and the particular shape and velocity with which the object seemed to approach riveted his attention, and he strained his eyes to discover its character. When first noticed, it appeared about the size of an orange would continue to grow in size, but after gazing at it for some time, Mr. Martin became blind from long looking, probably from the sun, because the way that uh, UFO casebook rightly surmises the sun must have been behind it uh, 
and that's where he had to essentially rest his eyes. And so it says and continues, and left off viewing it for a minute in order to rest his eyes. On resuming his view, the object was almost overhead and had increased considerably in size and now appeared to be going through space at a wonderful speed. And when directly over him, it was about the size of a large saucer. There's that keyword saucer, again, proof that this was one of the earliest, if not the earliest, instance of that word being used and was evidently at a great height. And Mr. Martin thought that it might resemble as well as he could judge at such a distance a balloon which seems to be for him to be the most reasonable solution of the strange phenomenon though he is of the opinion that it was possibly some of of the heavenly bodies and it went as rapidly as it had come and it was soon lost to sight in the southern sky i love that last part too where it says mr martin is a gentleman of undoubted veracity and the strange occurrence if it was not a balloon deserves the attention of our scientists so the newspaper was absolutely reaffirming that mr martin was not one person that would definitely just make this up out of the blue trying to seek attention maybe trying to do a hoax here and there no in this case he was someone that was absolutely of credible source and so whenever he was saying this and the newspaper caught wind of his experience they absolutely placed it within the newspaper with complete confidence and that newspaper from the looks of it because I was looking at several other pages like that day the way the newspaper was then there were four um, pages obviously newspapers today are a lot more uh, even the ones that are no longer in print they and are just digital there are a lot more pages but back then four pages was enough and so some of the other pages were the real stuff like the stuff you usually see in newspapers either doom and gloom or other type of newspaper oriented stories but again so so very fascinating another thing that i found fascinating about it is the fact that um, with this instance happening in Denison, Texas, I wonder if anyone else has experienced this thing. Denison, Texas, again, um, it's it's a northern city. The only reason I go to it is because it happens to be right on near the border of North Texas, which is near the casinos there in Oklahoma. So it's a great place to to be close to one of my favorite hotels that I keep staying at while at the same time being near the casino so I do it and I'm sure pretty uh, a bunch of other people do it there it's like a city down the cusp of being a city so I wonder if a lot of tourists like myself see some of the other UFOs there or if anyone has had any other experience as well with this instance and the other thing that was fascinating about it is again it's so old it's 1878 um, decades before when it came I guess to like the Roswell incident or or the more prominent ones that even happened afterward with regards to alien and UFO encounters like the fire in the sky deal or the uh, Barney and Betty Hill incident you know this was 1878 far far uh, earlier than any of those instances so again another interesting thing to note also the fact that even then being in 1878 clearly there was no uh, aircraft of any kind that would even be close to what this was I mean uh, nothing in terms of its velocity maybe its shape again if, if you're talking about some kind of large balloon of some sort but otherwise that's you know nothing in terms of what this could be uh, with regard to kind of like with one of my earlier videos a couple of days back with the Segway alien there was that thing whatever it was whatever it was in terms of a humanoid riding around in that Segway at a time when clearly Segways were not existing at all so again so fascinating in another regard there so and the other reason that I picked it is because with regards to Mr. Martin, him being so credible and him being described as a farmer living in that city, almost being like a well-known person of some sort, um, the UFO casebook rightfully cited in one of their other articles, because I was reading, I was going to extremes, I was reading the earliest instance that they have, like this one here, and then I was reading some, one of the later ones, and on the later ones, they noted that the later ones, meaning those that are in the 1990s, the 2000s, the 2010s, and so forth, those are being much more outlandish, like the way people are describing their experiences here, it seems much more real it would be him seeing something maybe it approaches him maybe he loses sight of it um, with regards to especially if the sun was in the in front of him that 
seems reasonable that seems realistic and then he would just experience it from a close level but that's it like that's it he would just visually see it and then it would shoot up and off now today when it comes to some of the stories they'll probably uh, have people stating that they went on board they traveled to another galaxy they saw multiple races they probably interacted no um and if it's too outlandish it's too good to be true and in, in some cases here it seems like definitely it's a more uh realistic instance no word though whatever happened to this guy mr martin obviously with it's being so far back no doubt he just lived a regular life this was his only instance where um this occurred to him no other uh place that I could find at least where those aliens or whatever they were revisited him later on but if anyone has any more information about it that would be really great to hear so anyways just thought I would give you all a, uh, a surprise one I guess a little special one of sorts when it came to the alien GFO's tales this one being one of the earliest ones in print especially with the word saucer too so quite fascinating stuff so all right everybody thanks again as always take care